Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Morning Devotions. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. This is the lost chapter, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. And so here we go. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he had come home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you, that likewise joy shall be in the heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance so jesus is in a crowd with tax collector sinners the pharisees and the scribes show up as well all of them the religious and the non-religious were there to hear jesus he sees them all and he tells them three stories this one is referred to as the this is referred to as the lost chapter he begins to give the perspective of god to both groups the lost and the found hope to the sinner and a lesson to the pharisees the Pharisees were convinced that God despised sinners and even taught that. If you consider one, another story uh, with the blind man that Jesus healed, whenever he's questioned by the Pharisees, he says, uh, the blind man said, well, we know that God doesn't hear the prayer of sinners. We know, you and I know that that's not true, but that was how he was taught. He was parroting the Pharisees' teaching. Jesus came to show how God really viewed the lost and the search for the lost. The first lost story was a sheep. A sheep, a shepherd uh, had 100 sheep and one was lost and 99 were with the shepherd. So he leaves the 99 to go find the one. Now, why would he do that for one lost sheep? So there's a, there's a story. Whenever I was a youth pastor, we were at a theme park and we had multiple groups of kids and they were all to stay together. Well, one girl got distracted and she lost her group and her group didn't realize that they had lost her she didn't have a cell phone one thought she was with another another thought she was with another um, and at the end of the day when we were at this meeting place we took inventory all the groups came together and she was not there the one girl without a cell phone was not there she was lost I didn't say, well, we have all the other students let's go what's losing one <laughs> no one chaperone stayed with the rest of the students in one place and we went looking, we went searching and we were overjoyed when we found her because one mattered. We were not going to leave the one. The story emphasizes God's possession and attachment. He is our father, by the way. I love how Jesus tells us the heaven how heaven responds when the lost is found. And it says, likewise, joy is in the heaven over one sinner that repents. So heaven throws a party when one sinner repents. Either, and he goes into the lost coin, what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, doth not light a candle, sweep in the house, and search, dilig search diligently till she finds it. And when she founds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, I have found the peace that I lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. So the lost coin highlights the search. It shows God's ownership and man's worth. In this story, the woman turns the house upside down to find this one coin, showing our value in the eyes of God that he will turn the world upside down to find us. The sinner is so precious in God's eyes that no effort is too great to reclaim it. It, it, the details are so graphic. There was an earnestness, a thoroughness, and a persistence until the result was attained. The house was turned upside down until the coin was found. And, the joy, and there's another layer added in the line. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God. There is joy in the presence. It says in the presence of the angels of God over one that repents. More specific than the first, it's not just heaven that's rejoicing. It's in the presence of the angels. May I ask you a question? Who is in the presence of the angels of God? Is it not God himself, Jesus Christ? No one is more excited than him over one person that repents. 
And then he tells the third story, the lost son. And he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth me. And he divided his living. And not many days after the young son gathered all together, took the journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to him, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I'll arise and go to my father and say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no worthy to be called thy son. Make me a hired servant. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great far way off, his father saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. And the father said to him, father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight and am no worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put on the ring, his a finger, a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. My son that was dead is now alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Now, when the elders was in the field and he came draw nigh the house, he heard the music and dancing. He called one of his servants and asked what it meant. And he said, thy father is come. Thy father hath killed the fatted calf. Thy brother is come. Thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he receiveth him safe and sound. He was angry and would not go in. Therefore his, came his father out. His father went out to the other son. He didn't go looking for the son that was lost, but he went out to this one and he entreated him. And he answered, said, Father, lo, many years I served thee, neither transgressed I against thy commandment. And yet thou never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son comes home, that which thou vowed thy har living of, with harlots, thou killed him a fatted calf. And he said, son, thou art even with me and all that I have is yours. It was meet that I should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, is alive again, was lost, and is now found. In the story of the lost son, it highlights the son seeking the father for restoration. The father had two sons. Throughout their lives, they had a blessing of their father in their homes. The younger wanted his inheritance, so dad sold half the land, cashed out the 401k, sold half the livestock, and gave it to the son. His son left, spent all on sinful living. The money ran out. But then the father never sought him. The father never sought him out. Sometimes I wondered why. The shepherd went after the one. The woman swept her house. What was different this time? The son, I mean, excuse me, the sheep was lost innocently. The coin was lost irresponsibly. But the son left intentionally, and the father gave him the choice. There are times when God sends a storm to stir us. There are times when God sends blessings to lure us. Then there are times when God sends nothing at all but silence as, an, as he honors us with the freedom of choice. The son, the lost son, found himself working in a pig pen. Consider a Jewish son working in a pig pen. The irony, Jewish culture deemed the pig unclean. Here he was, but then he came to himself and thought that his father's servants had it better than him, so he'll just go repent and he'll ask to serve. The only way to get out of willful disobedience is when you come to yourself and pursue humble forgiveness and humble obedience. So what, the fa what was the father's attitude toward his son when he saw him a far way off? He, it says that he ran to him and he fell on him. In Jewish custom, this son could have been stoned. But with the father falling on him, he was saying, if you stone him, you have to stone me first. Isn't that an incredible picture of the cross? We run to Jesus and he covers us. And, and, and covers our sin and covers our shame, puts his robe of righteousness on us, throws us a party. The son gives his prepared speech. I'm not worthy to be called your son. The father ignores his speech and immediately tells his servant, kill the fatted calf, let's have a party. My son was dead and is alive, was lost, but now found. His elder son hears the music and singing. You see, his elder son didn't have the heart of a son he had the heart of a hired servant. 
he said to his father, these many years I served thee and you neither transgressed you. I didn't transgress your commandments. You never gave me a goat. You never let me have a party with my friends. And the father responded, you've been with me always. Everything I have is yours. We have to be excited because your brother was lost and is found. This is the happiest part for the father because both his sons are in his presence. You know what heaven's response is? Joy and celebration. So, but what is your response? What's your response toward a joyful God? What's your response toward the lost? What's your resp response toward the lost that's now found? I have an idea. If heaven is rejoicing, if the one in the presence of the angels is rejoicing, let's have a party. Jesus is less concerned with your speech about service and more concerned about your pro proximity to him. So let's get close today and enjoy being with our Father. There is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents. Today, let's repent and let's get into his presence and let's just have a party in his presence. God bless you and I will see you today is Friday, actually. So I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.